Welcome back to another animation analysis and today I'm going to talk about the Glen Keane movie Over the Moon. And I'm going to talk about the first section. If you've seen the movie, you know the specific switch where the, it's a, quite a change and I don't want to spoil that because it's really cool. So I'm going to concentrate on a couple of shots and sequences at the very beginning and as always give you my subjective opinions and tell you what I like about it. So the first thing I want to talk about is this one, just because there's some really nice interaction between multiple characters. And this is all mostly going to be focused for students who are asking, well, what should I do with my shots? I've just finished a lot of semesters where a lot of questions come up in terms of what should they do. Like, this is really interesting where you have a character holding on to another character. You have also small interaction with here with the finger on the face. And this all continues on as the girl's not just stuck there. You can see this as she regrasp but also let's go so you have that type of thing here where she goes down she wraps her leg around him and as she goes down you can see how it pulls him down shoulder goes down body goes down the head interacts there's even interaction on the ear a lot of detail here and it's cool too because there's a lot of smushing so you got a lot of cheekbones and skin and all of that interacting same thing here so as she goes over jumps onto the mother but then they bump into each other here it's important that you make sure that it feels like it's, yes, it's a harder, you know, skull element, but it's still not going to be a super hard linear key. It's going to be slightly soft. And I thought all of that stuff was really well done. And just as an idea too, if you have a shot, you don't want to know, and you don't know what you want to do in terms of mechanics. Like all of that is really interesting where you have interaction between multiple characters and not just as one static thing with a constraint, but it goes down, moves over, lots of mechanics here, cue clean poses into that. It's also not just interaction, but also a hold with a swing. Just all kinds of physics and mechanics at play here. So that as a, an inspiration for your shot, I thought it was really cool. And I'm going to move on actually to this next. This is all about body mechanics, but before I get into that, I like this too, that the character is not just, it's not just a cycle going up, but she is aware. She sees this, she reacts, she looks at the girl. Little moments like that, I'm always a big fan of this. But look at that. If you look at her, she's going down stairs right and it's not just in a straight line because i always talk to my students about one axis how it's easy to do and obviously nothing is easy in animation but as you do this she has quite the path here and that's much more complicated than just going straight down on top of that it's stairs and it's downhill then it translates to something or transitions into a flatter surface then into a jump which is a little nice drop and just enough time and wait for that momentum to settle there for that turn and into this jump up with that again nice push off full extension on the leg here nice hang time you got a complexity of a turn in that up and down again nice compression and weight before she continues and then again it's not just a straight path she has a little bit of a hop there just for contrast a cute little whoop and then it goes into stairs again oh a couple steps not stairs just a couple steps going down again wait into this full compression for a squash in that a jump there. I mean, all of that, there's so much contrast in there. There's so many different elements. So if you are starting a shot and you're doing, well, I gotta do a body mechanic shot and you're going, what should I do? Look at that. I mean, so complicated, so tough to do and so many different elements, not just in terms of the path complexity, but even just a jump here. It's not just one thing. It's also her cutely reacting to this. It has a little bit of a character and personality to that. It's just really, really well done. This one is less body mechanics, it's more, I thought it was kind of neat in terms of this is her height, this is her age, and it's kind of shown with this. That's her age, she barely hits this. And then yes, we have a transition where all of this changes, we understand this is the passage of time, but it's also illustrated with this, that she's going to bump into this even more. She has to duck down, to not get her face in there. And just the usage of prop can be, uh, if you watch myself, you know how much I love props and what you can do with them. But this is a cool element to show, well, this is, you know, her at a certain age. And as she gets older, this is how she will have to interact. And again, it shows the passage of time with her growing and how she has to interact with that. It's a title thing. It's not specifically something in terms of body mechanics. But I thought if you're adding, as always, a set or props or anything, well, what could you do? Not that you have to do a passage of time and copy that. But think about how you could use your set and your props again to highlight certain traits, age or whatever you want to do in your shot. And speaking of passage of time, like this reminds me of this clip here where you can see how the character has the cigarette. And as it continues on, you can see if you focus on this here, how there's more and more and more and more. But not just in terms of props, you can see also passage of time in terms of 
how is he in terms of the beard and shaved and the hair. And as you continue forward, you can see five o'clock shadow, the hair is all crazy, more stuff here. So this whole animation is just a really great example of just also the editing, all those little moments of changes and how the character is different. Just great, but I love all of this little detail, even that stuff, if you haven't caught that at the beginning. It's just such a great thing. Even here, the tie, if you look at the beginning, it's like that, and at the end, it's like this. Just lots of little great examples in this one. This one I thought was really cute because as she puts the bike down, you got the rabbit, the bunny coming out, and she does this. I love this, that she prepares her leg and the foot here's that creature can jump on that. It was a nice little compression and the weight on that leg. Jumping off, nice curve here into that where it settles into, ah, oh, this is going to be great. And the reason why I want to show you this here is because of this moment there. Like I said, it's because this shows kind of a, a repetition. It's a routine. It's, it's familiarity. It's that this is not the first time creature has to go into there. She does. She runs her errands here. And that's her thing that she does so that the creature can hop on here and get on top of that because it's fairly high up. And I like that because, again, it tells us that they have a relationship. They have done this before. It just adds an extra thing. There's the mechanics, obviously, and the weight. But I thought it was a cute moment to showcase, okay, this is her routine. This is not the first time. And they have that relationship with that routine and what she does and what the creature does here. So if you have an interaction like that, think about that. Which reminds me, for instance, this is another clip that I show it has nothing to do with this movie, but it's from True Detective. And the moment that I show is when this character brings in the food and hands it over to him. And he, he's not looking at him. He's looking at all of these guys here. And it's not the first time for him either. The food comes over. He just looks down and grabs it because that's probably what they do over lunch. He gets the food, he grabs it, and so on and so on. So if you have a character that interacts with whatever, a creature or anything with another character, you can think about those moments where, well, is this the first time or not? Is that a routine? Is this some familiarity? And it can add an extra layer between character relationships or just how a person goes about their business. This is purely about composition. I might be reading too much into this, but I like this moment here where she has a very clean silhouette. She's framed properly. Everything is clean and I wouldn't say... Not complicated, but she's trying to have a relationship with her. But in her world, everything's okay. She found her love and everything's okay there. But for her, things are complicated. She has potentially a quote-unquote new mother. There's a new brother coming into play. And all of that to me feels like all of these elements here just make it complicated visually and because her life is complicated. And again, I might be reading into this and this could be totally wrong, but this is what I'm getting out of that moment. I thought this was kind of neat in terms of composition and placement of your characters. So again, something for you to think about as you are or if you are adding a set to your character moment or character piece or body mechanics or whatever you have. Think about composition and placement. There are many things in this movie that I like and this is not actually what I want to highlight here, but I love this. I love that you have the 2D element that goes into this and you have that with that that you put here, switch between mediums. I don't know, it's just really cute. There's many, many really cute moments in this movie. Boba. So this is more about montages. And what I like about montage is that it's a character doing the same thing over and over and over, but differently. And I think this is a good example for students as well. If they do something that's more on the shorter side. Well, that's a recommendation. A lot of times if you do a shot, not that this is very complicated in terms of mechanics, which is basically just doing this and drinking, but it's a nice offset pose, but it's nice and short. And if students take on shots that are too long, they will never have the time to finish. And I like that she has that moment here, that moment here, that moment there. All of those moments are, are small little vignettes, but short enough that if you take a shot on like this, like something like that, just eating, just keep it short. It still works and you can polish it, you can finish it. And all of that is just really good reference material. Also, I love this here when she goes, ah, ah. <laughs> wakes up the bunny. I love that. She hits the enter key and it does all this. I don't know. To me, many, many really cute moments. And this continues here too. It's like this would be your sit down assignment or it could be I'm trying to go to bed assignment, whatever it is, but it's against the repetition of sitting down like this, like that, or like that with a drop over. Again, this is a great example of different ways of doing something. It kind of reminds me of the 50, 50 ways of walking or 50 ways of, of swimming or what is by Kevin Perry and then other channels, but I think this is great reference material. And again, they're short. You can see it's cute because you got the mechanics of a human onto a bouncy soft surface. You can see that where she bounces off. So all those elements are not long. See that? Those are short, short moments. But I think great reference material and a good reminder that you should keep your shots short so you can actually go through the whole thing and add all the necessary polish so you can practice the whole thing from beginning to the end. 
And this is fairly similar here. Not that it's the same in terms of bottom mechanics, but it's kind of the same in terms of a launch. But there's so many things that I love about here is A, she prepares something and has to go back. So now you have bottom mechanics from here moving on to, to this. Then you have a tiny, tiny weight assignment, but not really, not that this creature is heavy, but it's more like a weight interaction with a end of a different pose, if that makes sense, right? You got a beginning pose, transition into another pose. So your assignment could be, you have one pose, and maybe the teacher tells them, this is the pose you have to hit, and this is the pose you have to hit at the end, and you come up with an interesting transition between the two. But then you also have props like that. And I love animating props. This could be fun to animate. You got a reaction to something that's off screen. You got the off screen elements that come down. A little bit of an interaction element there. Change in their face as well. Then you got the same thing here. Where you have a different type of rocket here. You can see the difference between here and here. She sits differently. You got a little creature for an added cuteness. You got this big moment that can give you a lot of contrast and physicality and also a bit of weight as they drop down. And in this case, this is more about timing. I love this if you watch this as it goes up here. I love that little throw there. Bing! Doing all that. And this is like your, your bouncing ball in a way, right? You got your object goes up, hang time, and drop with a cute weight <laughs> with that. It's just all really well done. And as a bonus, I love this here too. How she gets in and grabs that. Got nice cloth, but also nice timing here where it rolls and a slight pause because the pause is there so that she can grab the doll and then continue to move over so it's not just a you know in terms of timing a linear thing of and stop but no 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 it has this that texture and timing you got that drop with a slight pause whoop, and then the turn hold and then continue so good so many good moments in this movie this goes into sort of a weight assignment because again those boxes don't seem super heavy but what i like is a to contrast so you got this way of picking something up and then you got this way of picking something up but what i like about that second one too is that it's not just a physical exercise of i'm picking something up right it adds an extra thing of well i gotta make sure that i can talk to this person so in terms of the head position and the placement and you got that cute little up hold and turn and then this one where she grabs it again she addresses this person and it's this downwards move and thank you that goes into that the timing and rhythm of thank you and then over there it's really cute how she has that prolonged facial expression here and then the look over to the mom to some degree looking down here but it's somewhat acknowledging that yep and over so again the changing timing it's not just a turn it has that slight pause just a slight pause there and the continuation so watch this again so if you do something like a weight assignment again this is not extremely heavy but it adds uh, a trait of personality there of how she picks it up and i think if you're past the bottom mechanics and you have to do something where well you know the assignment is a pickup or a bottom mechanic shot think about those elements maybe you want to add a second character that's clever because you don't see the face you don't have to do any facial animation maybe the character is not doing any of this and just standing there just maybe that this character is just there for for context or placement but it gives her something to look at same with these and something to navigate through as she has to go between all of these Again, another clever moment here where the pin just is too low, so this will drop. It gives her the idea of going this way. Why? Because clever, clever, because the post is right there too. That's something else that she's looked at before. It's just lots of little clever moments. I love that. But what I want to show you is that once she has this whole idea, these are like a sit down or a standing up is a classic exercise at school. Now, I've, I've asked a couple of my students actually this semester to do a sit down, but this would be an interesting getting up because she's focused on something versus getting up where you're in a hurry or you're freaking out or you're tired. So this would be something where it's a bottom mechanic shot with an underlying thing of, well, the character is focusing on something. And then as it continues, let's go forward here, like, like this transition to her, is this is your way of sitting down in an excited way, in this sequence here, she's singing. If you're watching this, uh, I don't have the sound here, but she's singing. But I like that, where it comes in with, ha with that moment. Then grabbing this, where I know she looked at it quickly, but she's concentrating on something else. This is her room. She's familiar with all of this. She doesn't have to really look how to sit down. And I like this kind of blind grab and sit. And you can see how even the foot goes back. But she knows this room, she knows this chair. And then because this chair has wheels, this will be your interesting sit down of, let me see here, go back. 
They sit and roll into that. Now, there I say, this is going to be very arrogant here, but adding a little detail would be cool because this is a, a hard surface versus a carpet. It would have been cool to see a slight change in bump in the wheel interacting and even the speed change because this is going to be rolling faster here than here. This is super picky, but if you're doing this, I'm a big fan of surface transitions. And this could be a character sliding, bumping, and then, you know, doing a couple steps for adjustment or something rolling, hitting another surface. This would be really cool. Now, you might argue maybe, I don't know what this is. This could be something really, really thin. It's not really carpety or something that's thicker and that, you know, has zero effect on the chair. I'm just being super picky. Maybe just as a an idea, a springboard for something else that you could do with your shot as you have that. And speaking of exercise, here's something else. A classic weight assignment. It doesn't always have to be a character lifting a box. It could also be something where a character is pulling something. But the reason why I'm showing you this is because A, it's a cool moment where you can really show the force, the line of action where it, it has a lean. It's not just a, you know, a straight standing character. You have that lean, but what I'm showing you is this. As she lets go, you got that extra bottom mechanic of drop and turn. And on top of that, you got the weight object here landing and doing its thing. And I love this too, where you have that as a slight slide. You can see how this bounces, watch this. As it drops, boom, with a slight rotation, a roll left and right, and the bounciness in here. So it's cool for me that it's not only a weight assignment, but you add more complicated body mechanics to it and a bit of polish and cute physics there with this object. So if you are doing, again, a weight assignment or any type of exercise, and you want to go further, your teacher tells you add some personality or character, some extra stuff to it, this would be a cool presentation of that extra stuff. Again, don't copy this, but just as a springboard for ideas. Now, the next two sequences or shots are in that section where things have changed. So spoiler, this is totally different. And don't watch this if you don't want to know what's going to happen later on. So this is now where she is on the moon. If you watch the trailer, it will probably spoil it as well, but I still don't want to spoil too much here. But again, this goes into bottom mechanics. When, when students ask me, what should I do for bottom mechanics? Imagine a character is grabbing a character and throwing a character away. So you have, how is this character going to grab this? How strong is this character compared to this one? Is this going to be like, in this case, a grab with just one hand? It would have to be both arms. Can you show how strong this is by just picking, you know, this character up with two fingers? Then you have the mechanics of a grab and throw and how this character will react to this. Then you got the throw and the land. And is this land on something hard? Could it be on something soft? Could it be sand? Could it be water? Could it be something icy and hard? Many things that you will decide that will also change the physics of how this character is going to land. But on top of that, I love this here. Look at the scramble getting up. That and then the run with this. It's just so good because it's not just a simple getting up. You got, because of the, the dusty, sandy, somewhat moon dust surface here, you have a slip. And because of that, she has to readjust. Clean silhouette here, grabbing into this. I love this here too, with the knee slightly in, slightly awkward for the push off. And then as she continues here, you can see this, again, a little bit of a trip. So it's not just a cycle running forward, but you got that change here. And then because of that, because of that lean this way, it will, you know, it will have a a change in the balance. That's what I was trying to say. I was going to say, you know what I meant, balance. Because of that, she has to adjust here with that leg, which then brings her over this way. Then she has that lean because of that. And then as she catches up, the balance will change. And then even then, it's not just a steady run or a cycle. She goes into wait, and she has that. So there's a lot of pantomime that you can add to this. So if you have any ideas or you need ideas for something physical, Something like that, someone getting up and running. But think about the surface, right? How will that change the mechanics and add potential problems? And if the character is running after something, why? And how will that affect the character? And can you do something in terms of facial expressions or moments like that with their arm? And in this one, continuing the spoil territory, but it is marked in the corner. I like this here. I like how the creature takes the tail out there or brings the tail out for a pullover. Super cute. Also cute timing there of and then back into that little 
laughter bubble. It's so cute. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because if you have a creature, and this doesn't have to be a, a weird, fantastical fantasy creature, it could be a creature that, you know, is from our animal kingdom. You, you should look at the creature in terms of its anatomy. Does it have a tail? Does it have a long neck? Does it have interesting, I don't know, fangs or something with, with legs or arms or whatever, or nose? Because if you're picking a creature that has any of those features, then think about how you can use those for a cute little moment for stylization, for caricature. Don't just pick any type of animal. Think about why you pick this animal. What are the, the anatomical traits and changes in terms of, of how it's built or how it's moving. So you can capitalize on that and emphasize that for cute moments or you know whatever dramatic moments or comedy moments. But like in this case, it's just really cute how he does that here. But that's it. That concludes my little picking and choosing of certain scenes from Over the Moon. Again, there are so, there are so many good moments in this movie. I highly recommend you watch it. And again, there's a big switch somewhat with before the first half, kind of the, after the, the third. And I don't want to spoil that too much. If you're watching all this, it's got a uh, little, you got it spoiled already, but, but I highly recommend it because it's a really good movie about loss and moving on. It has great songs and just so many great little character moments and personalities. So that is that. I will stop rambling. This is it. Thank you for watching. And if you like those kind of animation analysis, I have all kinds of these on my channel. Feel free to go around and browse around and check them out. And if it's something that you like, you don't want to miss them, feel free to subscribe and hit the like button if you actually liked it. But you don't have to. It helps my channel if you do. And that is that. I said I would stop rambling, but I'm still rambling. So I'm going to stop this. Thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to watch all of this. And I'll see you in my next upload.